became a part of this family. In Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, and I'm reading from the message translation, so it usually starts off by saying, for by grace are you saved through faith. You'll recognize that part, but this is the message. It starts off a little, a little different. It says, saving, meaning salvation, is all God's idea and all His work. All we do is trust Him enough to let God do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we, we had done the whole thing. And that's, I think, a lot of truth to the fact that, you know, if we were a part of saving ourselves, because of our human nature, we would probably go around and say, look, God's good, but, you know, I made this turn around in my life. I did this, and look at me. And there have been debates through the years, and I'm certainly not going to get into it here because it's really uh, not important, of, of trying to understand this, this wonderful work of God. You know, did, did, God, uh, did God save us? At what point did we have any part of the decision-making process? So you have some that, that comes from God is sovereign. He had the whole thing in, in play all planned out, and He brought you into His family. And you have another group of people over here who say, yeah, God did all He did at the cross of Calvary, but whether or not I become a child of God is totally dependent upon my choice. So you have these, these two extremes, and the reality is, like most things, the truth is in the middle, though I'd probably lean a little bit more to the sovereignty of God, because I think He's got His act together, and I don't. So God has a place in His family, but it's not going to come because of what you can do. You can't do a good enough thing. You can't be faithful in the church and, and uh, carry out various good deeds to your neighbor, friends, and so forth and just be a good person and somehow think that you are part of God's family because after all, you, you were raised Catholic, you were raised Baptist, you were raised Presbyterian, or raised whatever. Maybe you raised nothing. But I think for those who have been raised in various uh, religious traditions, I think we struggle, or either we have been deceived, that somehow if, you know, my, my father's 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 father, we've been in this church, and you can't claim it about here because we're a new church, which is a good thing. But, but spiritually, you may think, you know, I've been to church all my life. I often ask people, well, when did you come to know Christ? And they say stuff like, well, I've, I've always been a Christian. I've always been a part of the church. And that is a big red flag to me that says you have never been confronted with the reality of the changing life of Christ. If you don't understand that at some point in your life that you are a sinner, lost, without the working grace of God, then, then the idea of being in church all your life, equating that with salvation, is, is a good way to put this passage into a comparison. By, by the law, if we can play on the word law, you mean to tell me that being a Baptist or being Presbyterian or Catholic or all the things, living in the Church of Christ, Assembly of God, I, I want to include everybody so you're happy. <laughs> you mean because you were a part of this and you're a grandma? You've got to be kidding. You think that makes you a Christian? Absolutely not. There's no way that we could... Uh, this is not genetic. You don't just pass this seed down to one kid after another and think, well, he was born in our family, so I, I guess he's got the DNA of being a Christian. <laughs> no, he's got the DNA of being selfish. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I raised... Are both of my boys are growing up. <laughs> They're wonderful now, but you know, when they were young... I... I don't, didn't see very many, this is my toy, do you want it? Do you want to play with it? It usually was, this is my toy, don't you dare touch it. It's all about self. We didn't have to teach them to be selfish and self-centered. They were already that way. We had to teach them the difference between being selfish and understanding how to share and how to be good. Now, maybe you have a kid that started off good. God bless you. I, my prayer is that they'll really wear you out in years to come. Because <laughs> if they don't get you the children, uh, the child years, they'll get you the teenager. They'll get you. You're going to be guided one with the other. <laughs> I do not know how you conjugate the word guided, but it's, it's in there. So God wants you to be a part of their family. 
but it won't become because of the things that you do or things that you're associated with. It's not a club. We don't have a card. I'm not a card-toting Baptist or card-toting whatever. Though, interesting enough, I don't go too far, but in, in, back in the in, in history of, of uh, Baptist tradition, uh, there were those people who were what they called Trump Baptists, which means that wherever they moved from place to place, they carried their membership, which was a card, in their trunk. And so they would know, and everyone would know, that when they came to this next church, they look, I have my membership from a previous card. I'm legit. And they called them Trump Baptists, or what I call card-carrying Baptists. We don't check your cards at the door. We don't check if you're legal or not. Uh, we just check whether or not you want to come in here and worship and find a connection with God. And if you don't have one, we pray you will. If you do have one, we pray that you'll be encouraged and blessed. Well, the last thing I want to share with you from this passage, we see in verses 8 and 9. And uh, this, this third point is God designed you with a purpose. God designed you with a purpose. Verse 89, it says, The Scripture foresaw. Key, key, key element. The Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Some people never got that. And He announced the Gospel in advance. Before all of this was to be, God had a plan. And He announced it in advance. And we see, All nations were blessed through you. So those of, uh, who have faith and are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. The man of faith. That's why I wore this goofy shirt today. It goes back to the Abrahamic covenant that uh, in this seed shall be blessed and we shall be uh, a great nation, a great people, and so forth. And indeed, because Abraham was faithful, he believed in God. We too are the sons of Abraham in that sort of way of thinking. So, we all kinfolk. We just kinfolk. We're all related through the blood. And so we understand that this was not an act that we did or that we chose, but, but God, because of Abraham's faithfulness, that He said that the nations of the world will be blessed, and that this day you're a testament of the faithfulness of Abraham, God and Abraham, because you too are part of His family. God had a purpose in the Old Testament through Abraham and others to bring about this day so that we could understand the, the freedom that we have in Christ. And it's an understanding, I think, that differs between what's, what's rules and, and relationships. It's a, it's a hard thing, I think, sometimes to decipher, but... Uh, you know, when you talk about freedom, when you talk about relationship, when you think about just the, the wonderful uh, lifting of, of burdens and lifting of legality to give you a sense of, of, uh, of joy and everything, it's not that that takes it to its most logical conclusion. It's not that there are no things that are wrong. People think, well, you're just free, and as a Christian, I can just do anything I want. And that's one of the things that came up also in the early church. Some of this Gnostic mentality was that, you know, your body is your body, your spirit is your spirit, so you're saved, you're doing good, let your body do whatever it wants. Sin or no sin, doesn't matter, that's just what your flesh is up to. So there's this dichotomy between what I know to do, because after all I have this spirit and this body, and somehow they don't mix, but uh, that's pretty idiotic. But it's convenient, don't you think? Wouldn't it be great to say, hey, my spirit's right with God, and boy, I'm going to turn the flesh loose. <laughs> you don't want to turn the flesh loose. Uh, because when we do, it does fleshy things. And we've all been there. Amen? Any self-righteous folk just going down to McDonald's? And just, <laughs> we're all just, just crooked people trying to do right. Maybe crooked isn't a bad word. We're just sinners. And I hope we don't forget that. Otherwise, we'll get this sort of spiritual piosity that pumps us up to some sort of celestial level in heaven that doesn't exist, and therefore you don't exist either. But the bottom line is, is, is this. Salvation is the redemptive work of God. Some of us 
have things that have bound us. And God wants to break us out. He wanted to break out the Galatians there. Don't put yourself back in prison with the law. I want you to break out. Be free. And I think many of us, when it comes to salvation, whatever our understanding is, I, I want you to know that the Bible talks about salvation as a work of God. It's just not something you become a part of because of proximity. I mean, you can, you can run around in a chicken house all day long, but you'll never become a chicken. You may smell like one, but you won't be a chicken. You can't come to church and do all these religious things and become a Christian either. People have the idea that everybody who comes to church is a believer. Well, they aren't. Or they had this idea that, well, if you go to church, somehow you're self-righteous. I said, no, we're just sick. This is a hospital for the sick. It's not a, it's not a nursing home for the saints. I mean, we are people who are becoming more and more into the image of Christ every day and realizing that is not a completed act. Paul says, I strive every day. I push forward. I do everything. Not looking behind every day. Every day, I become more like Christ. Every day, the Bible says that we must take up our cross and follow Him and uh, be a part of, of His purpose in that day and in our life. So I don't know where you've come from. I don't know what your thinking is, but I hope today that as I have repeated this, repeated this intentionally, that we grasp the idea that salvation is the total work of God. You can't earn it. In fact, we don't deserve it. But God gave it. And you can receive it if you can say, Yes, Christ, come into my life. Change my life. I want you to be my Savior. There has to be a point, a time in your history that you said yes to Christ. It wasn't just an experience at a, at a Christian concert. I mean, everybody feels saved at a Christian concert, don't you? If you weren't saved, you just get so happy. I went to Casting Crowns concert a while back. I didn't act like a Baptist. I kind of got a little happy. I enjoyed myself. And I thought, well, you know, if I weren't a Christian, I'd feel like one once I left this place. I mean, you know, just the energy and excitement. And see Casting Crowns in person. Got to go backstage. I got a picture with Mark. And, well, I don't have my phone. My wife took my phone away today. Father's Day gift. <laughs> and you know, I just it's just just amazing. But being around that kind of environment is not gonna make